So let's begin with slice to MIDI. So the, what I think, um, and the, the reader who sent this in is, his name is Jake. And what his question was, was how to make a whole, um, a whole track out of slice to MIDI. And I think that the reason he did this because he was talking about his question had to do with basically how to take slices from different songs and put them in the same slice to MIDI uh, rack which I realized, he asked that question, I realized, well, that's something I've never really thought about because um, usually slice to MIDI is kind of made so that you're using all the same drums from all the same break, for example. Um, it's not really made to mix and match drums, but usually if you're creating a sort of a sample-based song, you're going to want the snare from one break and maybe the kicks from another break, something like that. So it's a really useful thing to do. So I thought about it a little bit and I figured out how to do it. So here we go. Um, so first of all, let's just go over slice to MIDI here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it, uh, and you guys can watch. Hopefully, it'll answer any questions you might have. So um, here we have this break here. I'm going to press play. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, so that's a pretty basic break. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to warp this so make sure that it's in the right place actually you know, i already set the start time but so now the the, the clip starts right off. so it doesn't start right at the beginning it starts at the actual one of the beat and i'm going to go ahead and loop this down like that so i just get a one bar loop because the break is not really doesn't really change significantly so i'm just going to use that that one bar Okay, and then right now what I'm gonna do, and this is a habit I got in um, a while ago, and I'm not sure if it actually helps, to be honest. I think in my brain it does. I go ahead and I crop the sample, because that way I don't have all that superfluous junk in the uh, in the audio clip. And uh, to me, it's, it seems like a good way to make some gains in terms of the CPU, so the CPU is not referencing all that stuff, but who knows, maybe it does nothing. Um, okay, so now I have it cropped down, and then I'm going to do my normal slice to MIDI thing. I'm gonna do control click, and then I'm going to slice to new MIDI trick. MIDI track, sorry. And this one, it looks like I have, let's do eighth notes instead of 16th notes. Okay, because it doesn't look like there's anything going on in 16th notes really. And I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And so now we have our slice to MIDI. Okay, and if you notice, I'm going to press um, record here, and I have a launch pad set up, and it should, and here's something, I don't know why it does this, but it really boosts the volume when you slice to MIDI, so be careful to bring it down a little bit. See, you see, it gets really loud, right? So, all right. So let's say I have some of those slices that I want to use, some that I don't want to use. Okay, so let's say I'm going to use something like that. Okay, and then I have another break here. Let's listen to that. All right, so we'll go through the process of kind of looping this out so that we can uh, slice it down again. So. Once again, it has this sort of record stop at the beginning. So I usually actually just drag the start of the clip right to the first clean kick drum. So to me, it's kind of this one because the previous ones kind of are caught up in that, that record stop. In fact, I'm gonna make sure that I start right at the beginning there. Um, so I think that's getting the whole kick drum. So I'm gonna go ahead and control click this and I'm gonna set this as the one. So now when I press play, good. So once I've set it to one, I'm going to click it again and I'm gonna go warp from here. And this usually, to be honest, this usually will give me pretty good results. So I'm gonna set the link again, make sure that my loop is starting right at the beginning of the clip here. And then I'm gonna turn the loop on and see if that sounds okay.
All right, and if it's looping cleanly, it's good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slice this one onto a new track. So control this thing, and then I'm going to slice a new MIDI track. And you see the default, and actually, hold on, I'm gonna slice to the 16th note too. Okay, bam. And you can see that the default is that it sets up a whole new drum rack. And this is, I think, what, what Jake was trying to get around because now um, it's definitely difficult to play because you have to sort of decide what you want from each, each um, rack. And it could be more complicated to, to program as well because then you have to sort of like, oh, I want the hi-hats from this rack and only program the hi-hats on this rack, on this channel and then program the kick and the snare on another one, or if, you know, God forbid, on, there's a different kick and a different snare and a different everything from different breaks. So let's go ahead and see what we have in here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna arm this again, and I'm just gonna play it, turn the volume down again. All right, so to me, the most interesting things are gonna be the snare, let's say, and these, uh, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be toms, supposed to be congas. So the good thing that you can do, I realize this, is you can, first of all, rename it. So you can, so I'm, uh, let's say like, this is sort of like, a, I'm gonna put, call this an electric snare because it sounds kind of like a drum machine to me. And then I'm just gonna call this conga one, and this one, I think is gonna be conga too. So, and what I didn't realize is that you can literally just take this, highlight this, drag it into this one. And if you just hover on this guy for a little bit, your new, um, I'm, I'm pointing, um, your new, uh, your new, your other rack should show up and you can just drop it into here. So now you can just take slices from a different rack and basically Ableton's on the hard, oh, I don't wanna do that one. Um, Ableton does the hard work for you because it isolated all of the, all of the slices, right? And you can just drag it into this new rack here. And that way you have, you can kind of consolidate them all into one rack and that way you can play, you can mess around with them a little bit.